Welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. Join me as we have a real life discussion on how to change your life by changing your thoughts. Remember, question everything, trust yourself, and find your truth. You're listening to the Create What You Speak podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. My name is Sloan Fremont, and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Alex Martin, and we're going to be talking about accepting things as they are, not as we want them to be. So this, I'm really excited, Alex, for our conversation. Um, let me introduce Alex, and then I'll get into it because I, uh, I'll, once I start talking about this, I think I'm not going to shut up. So <laughs> <laughs> Alex Martin is the COO of Float, which is a freedom-focused community and centered so- social media site. He's interested in interpersonal communications and his love language is acts of service. (laughs) Yes, it is. Or maybe coffee. I I, I don't know. I told you that. (laughs) You know, I think I'm the only person on earth that doesn't like coffee. Oh, 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 come on. I don't get why it's a thing. I can half the audience was just like, nope, we're out. I know. I don't, (laughs) I don't get why it's a thing. I I really don't. I tried to like it over the years, but, um, I, you know, I, I don't feel like I need the caffeine. I know there's a lot of people that can't get their motor started in the morning unless they get that first shot. But uh, for me, it's like a mid afternoon. I have a cup of coffee and I feel kind of a warming sensation, like yeah. not just like emotionally warming. And then I think it kind of takes the the governor off the brain a little bit. So I feel like I can get into a workflow real ah. uh, much more easily. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, but then I, if it's too late today, I'm, I'm up till 4 a.m. Yep. So yeah. got to use it carefully. <laughs> My vice was always Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh my god no you get kidney stones oh it's terrible i can't drink that stuff <laughs> yeah it's pretty bad um so yeah thank you for having me i didn't get i forgot to say that thank you for having me on the show uh, i've been looking forward to this we talked a couple of weeks ago yeah and i uh, had a really great conversation i'm like we should do a show and you're like we, I, I, know. Do a I, show. Was, <laughs> I was glad you brought that up so let's start out why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself tell us about float and all the sure. great things that you have in, in, that are happening right now Right on. Well, like you said, Float is a, uh, a social media site. We're freedom focused. Uh, that's freedom of expression. And also the other side of that is personal responsibility. So you get to say what you want, but you also get to decide who you want to listen to. It's kind of mm-hmm. an adult thing, you know, right. and we need more of that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, but it's most, it's, it's, there's some political stuff as you might expect, but it's mostly focused on community building. Mm-hmm. So we uh, really encourage our members to, um, to show what they do. You know, we have homesteaders, we have people that hand make tools, we have people that bake, we have people that you know, homeschool. And so it's all these things that people are beginning to rediscover after the lockdowns and, and the sort of uncertainty of life in general, yeah. people are like, I, I want a purpose and meaning in my life. And so we encourage people to, to share those values and to um, explore uh, opportunities. And um, one of those uh, let's dovetail into this is our, our upcoming float fest. We do every year in gauze, Texas. Uh, this year, it's going to be April 29th through May 3rd. So if you want to check that out, floatfest.com, if I can put in a shameless yes. plug, F-L-O-T-E-F-E-S-T.com. Um, and that's like a five-day, four-night campout gathering, uh, boondock camping okay. on a farm in gauze. Mm-hmm. And folks, just last year, we had 250. This year, we're hoping for about 500. And uh, just hang out. We have some speakers. We have some performers. But it's a participatory event. We encourage people to come and vend, so uh, sell their wares or their services or do workshops or whatever. It's a lot of fun. So. Oh, awesome. um, that's kind of the, the gist of what we try to do is, is give people opportunities to create communities. Yeah. And I joined flow mm, several months ago now. And what I loved about the site is what you said, the community focus, the, the focus on don't just join and, you know, browse actually participate. Right. And that yeah. was something I think I had forgot about social media for so right. long because back when I was on big tech, which I'm not on anymore. Um, but I never posted anything because I was, I, it, it, to me, it w- I, it wasn't worth what I was going to get in the comments, right? Like sure. somebody would take it the wrong way. Somebody would have an opinion. A family member would call me up and ask me why I posted it, right? What's wrong with you today? Right. And I'm like, no, I'm done. So I had the, uh, right. I hadn't actually posted on social media, like things that I felt in so long, yeah. um, yeah. which was weird. That was weird. I, Cause once I started doing it and then I was like, wait, this is very freeing. I forgot I had this voice here. So that's yeah, one of yeah. the things that I really loved about float is I felt very welcome there and people were so yeah. friendly and so willing to engage in, in that way. Yeah. And we encourage folks to go beyond expressing the voice. Uh, that's a great starting point. You have to, you have to let that out first. You know, yeah. I am me, I, you know, put yourself out there, express yourself. Uh, but then to go beyond that, um, sometimes it's positive things, sometimes it's negative things uh, to go beyond that to action, you know, to getting involved yeah. in things, to, yeah. to, to saying, okay, there's this problem. Now, what are we going to do about it? 
And I don't right. mean, you know, pitchforks and torches, what are you going to do? But, you know, how can I affect change in my own life uh, on a local level, in my person, yes. in my relationships, in my community? Um, and so we encourage that kind of thinking. Um, our, 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 and we're going to do so more of that, just in the way the UI is presented, the way we uh, people communicate with each other. And I think our community kind of gets that already. So it's not like yeah. we have to filter or admonish people. They kind of get that it's, you know, bring something more than just uh, a meme or an opinion or, or a complaint. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the thing with obviously most, most everything we saw over the past two years, it was all problems, problems, yeah. problems, problems. And right. I found myself like, what can I do about this? What can I do? And getting back to that. Okay. What's in my span of control, right? What right. can I affect today in my life? What do it's I have? It's all about your influence. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, it, when we go outside of ourselves, it feels so helpless and we feel the victim. But when we come back in and bring it home, it's like, wait, no, mm -hmm. I have way more control than I remember, than I'm led to believe. And um, yeah. being able to take it back to that, I think that for me, there was so much relief in that, I think also too, because I found a place where I didn't feel like everything I was looking at was problems. Yeah, and right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm about to quote uh, Doug Stanhope and Gandhi in the same uh, breath. So <laughs> brace yourself. Um, Stanhope, the comedian, uh, among other things, says uh, that, that raising awareness, while important, is literally the least you can do. You know, yeah. somebody's in a ditch in an accident and they're wounded and they're like, help. And you're like, no, look, look, you know, like, no, yeah. no, no, help, you know. So at some point, you have to go beyond raising awareness and talking about the problems to actually getting involved and talking right. and getting uh, into them and, and doing something about them. Um, and the Gandhi part is um, everybody knows the quote, and I think it's attributed to him, be the change you want to see in the world. Right. Um, it's all about influence. It's about, you know, the world is full of problems. There's literally an infinite number of problems. There will always be new problems. You can't. And we'll always be reminded on, of that. Right. right. There will, there's new ones that come down the road as, the, as you solve the ones you got already. Um, you can't be personally engaged in the solution of every possible problem, but right. you can have influence over yourself and your perspectives and your thoughts and the way you see the world. And then to some degree over your relationships and that sort of middle sphere mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. how you treat people, what you expect of them, you know, how you communicate with them. And then ultimately that influence sort of moves outward without you even having to think about it. When you become the change you want to see in the world, you set an example and you create right. a path for other people to join you. You don't have to go out there and, and protest a, a, a grave injustice on another continent. You can make change in your own life and it yeah. actually works more effectively. It doesn't seem like it would, but it does. It does. And it goes back to that personal responsibility as well, yeah. right? That you mentioned at the beginning, if, if everyone took that more seriously, <laughs> the, right. the, I mean, the world would be a completely different place. Yeah. Just imagine if everybody upheld their agreements or communicated yeah. their expectations clearly, or, uh, you know, acted kindly to people as opposed to being suspicious of them first. If right. everybody started doing that, eventually the people that can't or won't or refuse to will be marginalized to the point where they're like, if I want to be part of this world, I need to change my behavior too. Right. You know, the, the prevailing trend is toward positivity and support and connection and, and purpose and meaning. And I don't want to be left out. So people will, they will, they will school right. with the people that are leading and you lead by just doing it. And I think when people see that in you, then they wonder, well, what's she doing or what's he doing? They're doing right. something they want different, to know. right? Yeah, yeah. They want yeah. the inside scoop. So okay. your light shines out and they want to see it. They want to know how you got it. Yeah. Right. And they want that. They want that because they can tell from your energy. You're, you, you operate under a different energy and exactly. that's contagious, I think. Yep. And that's a lot what we talk about on the show here about that, that you're, I call it your come from energy, right? What mm -hmm. energy are you bringing forward in the world? And people can tell when you're in a state of sure. fear or anger or whatever versus someone yeah. who's calm and got their shit together, really. Exactly. No, totally. Uh, you can see it immediately in their, in their posture and the tone of their right. voice, the light in their eyes. I mean, everything about us communicates our, our internal mindset through our, our physicality and the way we move yeah. in the world. Yeah. 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 So tell us again, when's Float Fest? What's the website? Float Fest is April 29th through May the 3rd. The website is uh, floatfest, F-L-O-T-E-F-E-S-T dot com. And, you know, tickets are available now. A uh, very low price, uh, mostly just about getting people out there. It's really cool. So awesome. check it out. Um, you can um, send messages to the site or you can just message us on Float. I'm alex at float.app. Anybody can just email me. I'll tell you all about it. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So let's get into our topic today. Yeah. And I want to tell the story about how Alex and I got on this podcast together today. So right on. Um, Alex did a post a while back about, it, it, I'm just going to summarize. I'll have him just do a brief, tell the story here in just a second, sure. but really it was, the post was about accepting things as they are, not as I want them to be. And yeah. that line in your post, when you first wrote that stuck out to me because I had seen that repeatedly recently. Yeah. And I was struggling with that because I didn't know what it, I didn't, I, it made sense intellectually, but I'm like, but they seem to be opposing 
beliefs. They seem to be on the opposite end of the spectrum. So I, I was struggling with how do I apply this in my life? Right. Talking about personal responsibility, taking it. What, what, what can I do with this? Because and to me, if I keep seeing something, there's something there I need to pay attention to, right? It keeps hitting me <laughs> the from lights all different- are flashing. I'm getting the message from multiple channels. Maybe it's uh, something I need to be aware of. Yeah, exactly. So Alex did a post, which I'll have him tell you about in just a second. Sure. And I responded to it and we had a little dialogue back and forth. And then there's only so much you can go in, in typing it out. Right. And then your suggestion was that we should come on the show and talk about it. And so that's yeah. how we ended up here today, um, here which are. is another example of just reaching out, building community, and you never know who you're going to meet or where it's going to lead you to. And so I, I absolutely love that kind of um, being able to meet you and other people through that way as well. Yeah. Um, well, the first step is communicating something, you know, um, yeah. as part of our float values, uh, uh, campaign, it's something that I run for, for float every week. We, we focus on a, a particular value. So, you know, determination was last week's post, for example. Um, you know, and I ask people to share their, their stories and sometimes we get some stories and sometimes we don't, um, for that particular post, I decided to share my story. Um, and I'll tell it briefly if I may. Yeah, go for it. Right. Um, it's like, a you know, kind of a, what was my aha moment? You know, at what point did I begin to realize myself as a, as a distinct person, right? Um, I was very young. I was 12 or 13 and it was a high school kind of situation. I had a crush on this, this young woman. Uh, I had for like, I don't know, since the sixth grade or something. No, wait, I was earlier than that. since like the third grade. Um, and, you know, we had been schoolyard chums and hung out together. And I just kind of had built up this expectation uh, that, that we were like a thing. I didn't know what a thing was, but it was kind right. of a, a feeling that I had. Right? right. And I just kind of assumed that because I had that feeling that uh, as, as I became a little older and understood, hey, you know, I actually kind of like her and she's attractive. And, you know, um, I just kind of expected that it was kind of already there. Right. Right. And I didn't, I didn't really think about it. Um, I didn't really have a, a, an awareness of what I was thinking really either. Um, so one evening, uh, you know, our school did these football games and then they would have these sort of mixers afterwards, a dance in the gym, you know, a DJ and the, turn the lights out. The kids kind of hang out. It was a <laughs> small town. They're trying to get us to, you know, pair up early. Right. Yeah. I grew up um, that way too. So I get that. <laughs> totally. Totally. So I'm sitting there and I was like, I kind of want to, you know, I'm to ask this girl to, to dance. Right. And, uh, I just, I didn't have the, I was shy when I was young, believe it or not. Uh, so I was like, what do I do? I talked to my friend who's, you know, kind of, I thought better looking, better dressed, more popular than I was. And I'm like, well, what should I do? And he's like, oh, who are you talking about? Well, that, you know, that girl over there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. Just be yourself. And you know, she'll figure it out. <laughs> That's what they tell you. Just be yourself. They'll figure it out. Okay. Right. Um, and then, you know, 20 minutes later, he's over there talking to her. Right. And they're dancing. And I'm just like, what happened here? You know, I was, I was hurt. Uh, right. I felt like something that was mine had been taken from me. Right. right? But I, I couldn't have articulated that in the moment. I was just, yeah, just angry. How did you mad? Why? And why would he do that to me? And yeah. yeah. Why, 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 what did I do? Right. What did I do wrong? Why did these people, you know, why didn't the world just give me what I want? Yeah, <laughs> right? The victim mode, right? The... <laughs> totally. It was straight yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, I felt slighted by him. I felt uh, dissed by her. I felt like I had been you know, something that I had built up in my mind had been stripped from me. Um, so, you know, my first response was to, to storm outside and go sit in the cold and just, you know, somebody will notice and they'll come and they'll ask me what's wrong. And then, you know, right. And it'll all be okay. okay. And they'll pat me on the back. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't happen. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I sat out on this cold concrete picnic bench outside of the gym for like, I don't know, it seemed like an hour. It's probably like 10 minutes. Right. And, uh, and as, as my bones chilled, I realized uh, nobody's coming out, you know, to, to nobody noticed I walked away. Nobody, it's not that they don't care, but they're busy. They're doing their thing. Right. You know, that guy and that girl are in there having fun. And I'm out here stewing, hoping, expecting, not just hoping, but expecting that people will be like, Oh, what happened to Alex? Where did he right. go? Let's, let's go check on him. Is he okay? Right. Um, so I went back in and, and part in my, I couldn't again, have said this at the time, but looking back on it, I believe I realized that um, if I, two parts, and this is just speaking to the, to the concept. First off, I have to realize that things are what they are. That girl, we were friends, but that doesn't mean that she owes me like romantic attention. Maybe she doesn't know that I am interested. Maybe she's already interested in somebody else. I'd never talked to her about it. She doesn't owe me anything. It, whatever right. the situation is, is, is what it is. It's not what I wanted it to be or expected. It to be. So I have to learn to accept that, you know? Um, and so accept the world for what it is first, and then act according to my desires. If I want to go talk to somebody, I have to go talk to them. 
I right. can't just expect people to know and, and come to me and bring me opportunities. So I went back in the gym and I, I went up to some other girl that had been nice to me before. And I asked her if she wanted it. And she's like, yeah, sure. It wasn't any big deal. You know? and and it wasn't on, like a, right? we, we right. didn't get married or anything, you know, it right. wasn't like that, but it was like, oh, now I'm having fun. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying life by not expecting this person to, for this dance to be a big deal to, for them to like me. They don't have to like me. They don't, we don't have to be boyfriend and girlfriend to go and hang out and have fun together. Um, and then I'm also willing to ask for what I want. And that doesn't mean I'm going to get it either. That's part right. of accepting. But uh, in that case, I did. And, and I realized the power of, of embracing reality for what it is. Yeah. I and, then, read what... yeah and then acting to change it if I want to. Yeah. Right. And I, I want to read what you wrote that stuck out to me in the post. And I'm going okay. to, uh, but before I do that, I want to say something really quick about mm -hmm. what you were talking about. Because I think everybody can imagine a scenario, maybe not this exact one, but very similar. Sure. Right. And the, when you talked about, you know, building it up in your mind, what I call that on the show is stories, right? We're telling yeah. ourselves stories. Oh yeah. So our, our, <laughs> our stories story. are right. Our stories yeah. are driving us one way or the other. And in that yeah. scenario, you know, drive the story of whatever you were creating, um, is, is leading you to, you know, go, something happens. You don't like it. You go sit outside. The thing about stories that's so amazing to me is we're telling these to ourselves, but nobody else knows what's going on. So nobody nope. else knew that you were upset or they nope. probably thought you went to the bathroom where you yep. went, who knows, they, they wouldn't even include in at all that you were remotely upset about this. Yep. And nope. if you think about, somebody said the, the quote to me the other day, there, there's too many players playing, meaning there's like, when we try to control things, there's too many yeah. players on, in that. And so think about everybody in the world going around with their stories, right? Oh, sure. Everybody's, it's amazing that we, any of us even interact with <laughs> the stories that I'm sure we're telling ourselves, right? But we're all going right. around with these stories, right? We're each the hero of our narrative and everybody else is either a non-player character or some quest giver or some object or something. And, and yeah, and we don't communicate any of that hardly to, to most right. people. Right. And, and so the, 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 that leads me to the point you talk about, about be, stating it, saying it, yeah. you know, yeah. Stop. We have to stop with the stories and assuming the stories are correct and right. never actually getting to the communication part where we find out if our story is correct or yep. we actually say what's going on with us or we, we actually, um, you know, get out of our own heads with this stuff, with anything, not just relationships, right? It's, it's everything in our lives. Sure. So I want to read what you put in the. And the earlier, the better, by the way, the yeah. less invested you are in your story, the easier it is to adapt. It. Yes, yes, yes. So go ahead, please. Think about that story. Like it build, builds energy, right? As it goes, it keeps building energy. And to mm -hmm. try to turn that around the other way is very hard. Yeah. So what you wrote in the post was, um, and this is at the end about when you were sitting outside thinking, you said, at that moment, I realized nobody really owes me anything. And if there's a thing I want, the only way to get for it is to ask, ask for it. That doesn't mean I'll get it, of course, but unless I make the effort, I have no reason to believe anything I want will happen. And you talk about, as you sat there and, um, you, what you truly wanted, it wasn't the girl's attention and it wasn't the respect of your friend. It was to have the power to take action for myself and by extension, to be able to accept things for what they were, not what I wanted them to be. And that, yeah. that to have power to take action for myself. That is yeah. so key in this because when we're in those stories, when we're in our swirling about things, we get into that victim mode, whether we want to or not, it's, it seems to be a default for most of us. And that takes our own power away and makes us yeah. feel like we don't have control, that there's nothing we can do about it. And it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning about the circle of our, our sphere of control, our circle of influence, mm -hmm. right? We have a choice. We have more choices. We have more power than we have ever been led to believe. And that's this, totally. this piece of the story was, was so key to me, um, to be able to, talk to you about further, but also to bring that up about the power to take action. Yeah. Again, as a 12 year old or whatever age I was 14 years old, I didn't think of it in those terms at the moment. Right. I just thought I, I want this feeling. I want to be close to this person or whatever. But as I've grown older, I realized that the wants of the things, the object or the relationship or the, the, the job or the, the vacation or whatever are less important than the ability to make those choices. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I have approached people that I thought, Oh, that person's interesting. Uh, and then had I not, had I reserved, you know, action and let it build up, then maybe I would have sort of been trying to, to actualize the story, as you said. Um, but by just walking up to the person and talk to them, I'm actually follow, finding out, are they interesting? Are they interested? Right. Right. And it's right. not the relationship that I want. It's the clarity and the knowledge and the ability to navigate the reality of the world. Yes. You know, if I walk up to that person and I go, hey, you know, I'm Alex. What's your name? And they go buzz off. I'm like, clearly not interested in talking to me. Right. And I'm happy with that. I'm not. Oh, my God. How dare she talk to me like that? Or, oh, I, I'm such a you know, I can't ever get, you know, 
it's not about the connection with that person per se. It's about being able to perceive the reality, to be able to ask for what I want, to be able to accept the no uh, or the yes, and 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 then you know actualize through those those choices and that power that comes from from within to do those things. That's really what it's about. That's and the opposite of that is the fear and the panic and the yeah. and the helplessness and the disempowerment. Um, we don't need to be. And, and this, I guess, is the bottom line. We don't need to be empowered because we are powerful. Right. We just need to use that power um, to perceive and then to make requests of the world and of other people. Right. And and the and when I and I wrote back to you on your post and I said that about that that the statement about accepting things as they are kept coming up to me and, and you added a second part to this that I also just wanted to touch on really quick because sure. you were talking about um you know you're talking about people say it's fate or it's meant to be and yeah. that um you know you said you disagree with that approach and that totally. really because the accepting things for what they are can sometimes sound like well I'm giving up and that's right. not what we're talking about here. We're not talking yeah. about accepting things. In, in, in fact, we're talking about the opposite because yeah. the, the accepting you, you write, wrote, the accepting part is not about letting those wishes turn into expectations or frustrations, accepting mm-hmm. things as they are meant setting my ex in, in the case of the girl you were talking about meant right. setting my expectations and entitlements aside and realize that this young girl had agency. She had freedom and choices. She didn't belong to anyone but herself mm-hmm. and the wish and will part would would have been for you to tell her your feelings when you realized you had them and then accept whatever the outcome might have been. Right. So we're talking right. about the completely, when we say accepting things as we are, this is not just accepting and giving up. This is the opposite. This is taking your yeah. power back. And, yeah. and then whatever the outcome is either way, not getting wrapped around like as we do. And I do this myself. So I'm speaking <laughs> as um, you know, I'm speaking to someone who this has sure. been very difficult for, I think um, it, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's so much in that. There's so much, I feel relief in that when we look yeah. at it that way. Yeah. There's <clears throat> the idea of, of fate on the one hand, well, what will be, will be, or if it's yeah. meant to be, it'll happen, or maybe it wasn't meant to be because it didn't happen. Um, and that's, that's a form of surrender to, to reality, but it kind of strips away one's ability to, to shape reality. And I believe right. we do have that ability. Yes. I don't want to give it up. Um, and the other part of that is, um, you know, accepting a negative outcome as, as being the, the final result. That, that's not what I mean either. Oh, well, I'm a victim. I'm a slave. I'm, you know, I'm powerless to act here. Um, even in the least powerful position that you might find yourself in, you still have agency. You still have the, the internal power, the freedom to accept the reality and to do something with it. Um, right. If I were imprisoned, yes, I'm physically constrained, but I'm not psychologically constrained. I can still right. think, I can still study, I can still communicate, I can still build relationships, I can navigate uh, the environment around me. Um, you know, there's no point where you just go, oh, well, I'm just, you know, flotsam on the sea of life, you know, or dust in the wind or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, you can give up your power, but that's you basically giving it up. You're advocating your responsibility to somebody else who will then take it and use it <laughs> against yeah, you it, sometimes. Right. You know? And I think, I feel like that even includes the universe or however you yeah. want to say that, because sure. when you give up and you feel, well, I can't have this. I just, I give up, I'm done. Well, then that's what we'll get, right. Yeah. That, that's yeah. the result we'll get. And when, when, when we're not stuck in these stories of um, how, you know, I accept it for what it is. I surrender yeah. I, because I think there is a balance there. There is a balance of surrendering Sure. to after you've made your request in, or communicate in whatever way there is a balance between that surrender but then also not giving up i guess there, there, yeah. that to me is maybe it's easy to to, to go between both of those to go from sure. the, surrendering to ah, i can never have this right thing. the 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 accepting is the accepting of of the reality of the situation the underlying yeah. truth that's there uh, to the yeah. degree that you can perceive it. Um, if I, again, I, if I had walked up to, to the, the young lady at the, at the dance and said, Hey, you know, I know we've been friends for a long time, but you know, it's, it's a dance. You want to dance? And she said, no, that's a little weird. Let's just keep it as friends. Well, right. that's the reality. And right. I have to accept that that's, even though it's not what I might, might've wanted, that would have been the reality. And then I get to choose, well, can I accept this person as a friend or am I going to have, unrealized expectations? Am I going to make problems here? I have to accept that reality too. That's it, the introspection part. Right. Where am I at with regard to this? If she's like, well, let's just be friends. I'm like, sure. And then, you know, next week I'm like, you want to dance? You know, that's not being friends. Right. You know, I have to accept that too. Um, but the reality also is that it's not about her per se. It's about 
me exercising my desires in the world. And there are other choices. There are other right. girls at the dance. There are other jobs and places to live and, and concepts to, 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 to work on. So what's really important is that I'm making, per, I'm perceiving the world. I'm accepting the reality for what it is, not trying to imprint my expectations on it, and then making decisions, making choices, taking action, and then receiving the response to those. And again, be in an accepting and asking kind of feedback yes. loop until I find the path that takes me where I really want to be. Right. right? And I, I don't necessarily know it. And the less invested I am in this particular thing, the more open I will be to finding where I actually want to be. Right. And I think when you talk about the, the acceptance, a lot of times we resist accepting yeah. it and there's a lot of yeah. pain in that resistance. Yeah. We right. get, we get invested in those, in those stories, right. those outcomes that we, that right. we hope for. Yeah. Right. And, but the, the powerful part of that is what you just said about where am I at in regards to this, yeah. right? Like I have a yeah. choice and I don't have to participate in this. I don't have to stay in this relationship or this job right. or this town, whatever it is, right? We've, right. we've all got choices. Oh my God. How many times have you stayed, not you personally, but maybe you stayed in a job or in a relationship, just trying to win, just trying yeah. to get a win, just trying yeah. to get the person or the, the boss or the, the guy in the intersection and blocking you to, to admit that they made a mistake. Right. And you're like, why am I so invested in this particular outcome? Is that serving right. me? Right. You know? No, probably, probably not at that point. You could have taken your right turn ages ago and it's never too late to just go, wow, I am really trying to like finish this story. Uh, I'll use your terms if I may. Um, I'm really trying to like write out this story and get to the ending where I'm the victor. Uh, right. And I don't, being a victor doesn't, that doesn't really serve me. It doesn't serve my interest. I just want to have a calm, happy life and have options. I don't want to be stuck in, in a road rage altercation or in a bad relationship for five years. Yes. And we, I think we spend a lot of time and energy on that, on that yeah. wanting to be the victor, wanting it yeah. to be this way. So yeah. I've got to do this. I've got to yeah. try to ramrod it here and push it there and force it there. And Or we say, why honest- aren't people com- you know, doing what we want? Why is the right. universe opposing us? Why are we being treated this way? We're trying to, to figure out what the resistance to our narrative is. And, and both yeah. of those are, 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 I guess, mistaken. Together. Yeah. And that's been a big, big lesson for me, especially re- recently. And that's, I think that's why that term kept coming up about accepting things as they are, because yeah. it, it does at our own expense. And I, I just, this is such a, I can, I think the listeners can relate to this too. When we do these things that we know we shouldn't do, right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're maybe sacrificing our own needs or our own, mm-hmm. um, you know, what's going to take care of us for the, at the sure. expense of, another a, a job trying to win trying to whatever yeah. it is and giving up better options costing yeah. ourselves other opportunities yeah yeah and yeah and we close down to that right we all we can see is this one little box and then we become stuck in the box and feel like yeah. the box is the only option and there's no other option so i'll i'll never have the relationship or i'll never have the job right. or i'll never have whatever right and then yeah. those stories start looping. that's a powerful self uh, negator when you say right if i don't make this work i'll never have another chance that's not yes. true it's completely yes. not true yes yeah. Yeah. And that, that's why I want to talk about this today, because it is so important, especially as we just what we've all been through the last two years. And as we come out of like, what's next, right? What's next for us? Right. How, how do I want to be? That was one of the big things I, I talked about a lot on the show about like for the longest time, I don't even know who I am anymore. Like to this read, you know, self-discovery, right? Sure. And yeah. this, this being able to understand this, what we're talking about today and be able to apply it in your life, um, can open so many more doors than I think maybe even any of us are willing to acknowledge or even there. Right. Sure. Yeah. Self-awareness is one of the, the values that we talked about on float on a little call back there. Um, it's important and it's not just like, I, I think there's a misconception of what self-awareness is. You know, I know my skills, my abilities, my strengths and weaknesses. That's part of it. That's more surface. But self-awareness is really like, what are my motivations? What is, what are my objectives? You know, what's the b- most valuable thing I can be doing at this point in my life, uh, at this moment in time? You know, really teasing out, you know, like sitting at that, on that cold park bench and, and going, mm-hmm. why am I angry right now? <laughs> you know, right. what, who hurt me? What happened? Where, how did I get this way? I don't want to be this person. What have I done wrong? Uh, where did I make a, a turn? And, and, and accepting the fact that, you know, just because I feel it doesn't mean it's, it's good for me. Yeah. You know? And I don't um, have to feel it. Yeah. I don't have to yeah. continue to punish, punish myself with these thoughts. Like my yeah. friend used to call it terrorizing herself with the thoughts. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's what it's like. And yeah. 
it, it's when we're doing that, I mean, we do, we get stuck in the loops and it's just, it, it, it I think everybody can, can relate to that feeling that yeah. way and how damaging that is in, in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. And here's, here's my question. Um, I feel fortunate that that happened to me and I feel like it was a start of a, of a longer journey of, of self-discovery and awareness, um, which I'm still on. Obviously, yeah. Never, it's a lifetime ends. journey, right? None never of us ends. have this solved or figured out. But the question is, you know, if you see somebody that's kind of stuck in that loop where they're just grinding that, why, 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 mm -hmm. why not? Why not? Why not? How do you help jolt them out of it? Yeah, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Like what you hear so far? Take what you've learned and invest in yourself with the Create What You Speak Academy. Visit createwhatyouspeak.com to learn more. Now back to the show. What you were talking about just a minute ago, like when you're in a loop or you're, you know, whatever, like in that example, the question yeah. I always ask myself is what's really going on here? Like yeah. what's really the deal here, right? Is the deal really the reality of things or is the deal really the stories I'm telling myself that are causing sure. the pain? And often for me, it's the stories that are causing yeah. the pain. You'll never have yeah. this or you're always going to be alone or whatever it is, right? And this and keeps so, happening to me, you know, right. this person and, and is against me, yeah. Yeah, and I think being in that understand having that awareness of that of where you're at with with things like are you really not okay with things or is it the self-talk that's the problem sure. and if sure. you have if, if you do see somebody in that or your friends or family or somebody's dealing with that you know i think being a or having even a therapist or somebody to work with i think being able to talk through those thoughts like like I don't know, a thought of, I'm never going to, I'm always going to be alone. That was one that I always right. had, right? Like right. if I tell that to you, it seems ridiculous to tell you sure. that. But yeah. when it's in I my would mind, say, yeah. when it's, it's in my different. mind, it's true. Oh my God. It's factual, right? It's this, yeah. it's this thing that is just, it's a matter of fact, it's written in stone. It cannot be changed. And right. there's that, that when we talk it out, when we get it out of our head, even in writing it down, right? Sometimes yeah, that's, that's, that's helped too. Being able to, if you don't want to talk to somebody, if you're not ready, getting it out on paper, I found also is a great way to just get it out. So it's, 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 it's the loop at least provides some relief from the loop for me. Right. Well, I'll, I'll use a, I feel like my voice just got a lot louder. I'll, I'll use a, a little simile here. I'm going to turn my mic down just a touch, um, which is that uh, it's like, <clears throat> it's like when you have a bad business idea, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're just like, you go, like, Hey, you know, here's a thought I'm going to buy uh, you know, a 3d printer and start making stuff and selling it on Etsy. And you're like, okay. And you kind of, it seems exciting and you kind of, uh, you, you, it's new toys to play with and new skills to develop and like possibilities are out there and you're seeing what other people are doing. I could do that. I could do that. I could make this much money. Um, and then you sort of spin this narrative in your head. Uh, and then the, the important part of, of sort of doing that is to reality check that story against somebody else. Is yeah. to go to another person and go, hey, let me tell you this idea. And they're like, well, what happens about this? Because they're going to poke holes in it if they're a good yes. friend. And sometimes if yes. they're a good enemy, they'll poke holes in it even harder. Right. Um, and so, so take it to both, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get, get the full spectrum. Um, well, what happens about this? Well, how much does this cost? Well, how often can you do that? How much power does it take? Do you have space for this? Do you have time for that? And then you have to start answering some questions about reality for yourself. Yeah. And you can go, well, you're just being negative. I just want support. Well, do you really just want support or do you want, you know, uh, good ideas and criticisms? Yeah. If you take that and, and you get some feedback from people and then you take that back into your planning and then you write out a business plan and you refine it and you pitch it to people. And then you, if, if somebody told that to you, would you invest in it? When you get it to right. that point, right. then you know, you've got something. It doesn't mean it's going to be successful, but at least you could take it to somebody and go, I want you to give me money to do this. And they're like, okay, clearly you've thought this through. Same thing, but opposite with your self doubt. If you said that to somebody right. else, uh, you know, and if, would they hear that uh, and, and accept that from you? You know, um, right. say it to somebody, let them, let them hear it. They will tell you, you know what? You're being too hard on yourself. You, you're not looking at this factor. You're, 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 you're cherry picking these bad examples because you're in a bad funk right yes. now. Let me tell you yes. about these good things you've done or these great relationships you've had. Uh, and they'll sort of balance that out. And then, you know, when you really write about it, I, I'm a big proponent of journaling. When you really write about it and you get it all out on paper and you read it back and you go, you know, it's not, it's really not that bad. If somebody else said that to me, I'd be like, come on, dude. Yeah, right. I, I have two quotes up on my, above my ear and it says, um, they say, is that really true? And what other possibilities exist? And I mm -hmm. love those two questions because they're, they're so helpful in that reframe. And a long time ago, I did an interview 
with someone and they were talking about another way to get out of your own head with that stuff is, um, like if your friend told you the same, and I think you touched on it, but if your friend told you the same story, would you believe it? Or would they be able to see right. other perspectives that you right. can't see? Right. And we get so tight and wound tightly wound in our box with our stories. Like the stories just constrict us. They just keep tying strings around sure. us and keep us more and more like just locked in. And when we can start to let go and, and think, okay, maybe this isn't right. Maybe there's more to this. I don't know. I don't have the answers. There's too many players playing, right? I can't see sure. them all. I don't know them all. I can't control right. them all. And when we start to unloosen some of this stuff, it helps to unravel, I think. And then it gives us space to breathe where sure. we're not like so consumed by this, like 24 seven, like, like wound up so tight. And so I think there's, there's, there's a lot there with that, but I think that's the important part for anybody listening who might be going through this, um, being able to get out of your head, find somebody if it's mm -hmm. journaling or another person, but being able to get those things out so that they're yeah. out there. And then you can kind of, like I said, telling you, Oh, I'm always, my peers, I'm always going to be alone. It's ridiculous to tell you yeah. it's ridiculous, yeah. but in my head, it sounds so true. And I think everybody can most likely relate to that. So I think that's sure. a great way to move past some of our own stories and realize they're not true. And we don't have to believe everything we think. That was a lesson right. I learned a long time ago. <clears throat> Yeah, our brains, will me, get, actually. our brains will get locked in these loops and we'll just turn them over and over and over in our head. Yeah. And that's not the reality of it. Um, as soon as you, you know, I tell people, write that down and then read it back to yourself in a mirror. You know, right. look, you know, is, does that really make sense? Does that really, you know, so once you've heard it again in your own voice, re record it and play it back to yourself. Do a video yeah. of it yourself and, and, and record it and, pl and play it back before you post it. Don't just post it. Um, is, that, is that other character in your story really a nefarious agent? Are they really out to get you? Is, did, did somebody, did these five people really conspire to make you uh, fail at this thing? Did, did, right. Was this guy always looking at this girl and trying to sabotage your relationship? Or, or maybe is it possible that when you pointed her out, he first noticed her too, you know? And he's like, well, you're not gonna go talk to her, I will, you know? Um, you know, don't, don't impugn yourself. Don't imply, uh, you know, negative uh, intention on people that may just be unwilling and unwitting actors in, your, in the stories you've constructed. Like right. That. They don't know your stories. Right. Yeah. And they've got their own stories going on. So yeah. I think we all could could see that and understand that. I think that also helps us be a little more um, kind to others and not yeah. so um, assuming the worst, assume, assuming that everybody's out to get us. Oh, sure. You see somebody else having a difficulty or struggling and you're like, what could be going on in their mind? How would I feel if I was sitting over there right now? <laughs> maybe, ooh, maybe just a, a friendly word or, or a kind wave or a, hey, how you right. doing? Might, might break them out of their, their sort of cycle of self-doubt and, and uncertainty. Yeah. So there's a lot we can do when we start thinking about um, there's this idea of intentionality. You know, what is the other person thinking? What are they thinking? I'm thinking you can go the wrong way with that, but if you really sort of, sort of deconstruct it and sort of look at it from the, the, the perspective of a, of a narrative or a script or a story, what is, what, what actor, what cast member, what is their role they're acting out right now? And maybe how can sort of, I look at them in a different way and not think of them yeah. as that, that person in, in my yeah. story. Yeah. 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 The reframe and, and, and being able yeah, to go totally. back to, to the original, what we talked about, accepting the acceptance of things right. and, and realizing the power that we do have um, is greater than I think we, any of us realize. And it's, it's, it's always great to be reminded of that. Right. And, and it starts with, with just speaking, you know, you can walk up to almost anybody and say, do you mind if I ask you a question? And, you know, yes, you just did. Oh, okay. Can I ask another one? That one too. You know, but you can always go, hey, I have a question I wanted to ask you. I saw you sitting over here and I was wondering, you know, you know, you, or you just, just speak, just, you know, express yourself. Hey, you know, um, the, the food was a little bit late. Are you guys like understaffed or something, you know, as opposed to why, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's just, just ask questions, just speak, you know, your concerns to people and, and, yeah. and do it in a respectful and, and moderate yeah. tone and with, with a perception that they may be facing things you don't know about, probably are. Uh, and I think a lot more will happen. You, that communication channel will open. They'll, you'll resonate understanding with them and vice versa. And they might go, look, you know, um, we, we're understaffed or, you know, restaurant business is hard or whatever metaphor you want to use. I just had a loss in my family. You know, do you really want to pile on that person because you see them as a lazy or shiftless yeah. or, or, you know, in your mind, you know, whatever you role you cast them in, it's not worth it. It's much easier just to say, Hey, you know, I had a thought, can I share it with you? You know? 
Yeah. And, and being able to, I think it just goes back to that kindness and openness and, and yeah. everybody's in a different place now. I think over the past two years, we're all in some form of this in some way, right. We're, yeah. and, and we were before, but I think before we weren't, we were so, I, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, I guess, but so busy that I wasn't even willing to look at it in that way. Right. And now yeah. it, things are, are completely different and everybody's been through a lot and being able to maybe choose a different, instead of going back to the old ways, what if we did things differently going forward? Sure. Absolutely. And, you know, just remembering you have the power to, to affect change in your life and doesn't have to be big, little changes, little changes, a little, every little bit at a time and all adds up. It does. Well, my guest this week has been Alex Martin, COO of float.com. And yeah, as we wrap you. up today, Alex, what's one thing you want to make sure the listeners know about really about anything we've talked about today, about accepting things, about personal power, um, what would you like to listen? Well, to? I mean, I, I talk a lot about to my friends and the people I communicate with about the power of taking responsibility for things. Yeah. And that doesn't mean it's your fault. It means that you have the power to affect change, you know, and accepting that. Um, and, and also realizing that when you don't affect that change, you're in some way accepting the reality of what's happening. I mean, like if you're in a bad job and you don't ask for a raise or, or change in your role, you just, well, I'm just going to, you know, keep my head down. Hope it gets life. better, right? Eh, hope. Well, that's your responsibility too. You're just, you yeah. know, you never lose it. It's like gravity. It never goes away. You just hand it off to somebody yeah. else, you know? Yeah. Um, and then um, by, by using that responsibility and making those choices and, and using your power. And again, I don't mean power like force. I mean, power like the ability to communicate, the ability to, to yeah. initiate conversations, to open up to people and to, and to perceive things and to, and to accept them. You use that power effectively and you get used to it. Um, you'll find that you really do craft your own world in a way, um, not through wishful thinking or not through magic, but, but through the choices that you make and the communication that yeah. you have. Uh, I think yeah. it's incredibly powerful. Um, anybody can do it. Everybody can do it. Everybody should do it. And uh, it starts with just perceiving, accepting, communicating. That's what yeah, I would say. And deciding. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Love I would it. also say, come to, come to our, our, our event. Yeah. Float I was going to say, so tell us again. about <laughs> uh, And you have a, a discount, I think a code for the listeners. Yeah, I do. I, I'll give you my code. Um, you can put it on the, the show notes. Um, the site is floatfest.com, F L O T E F E S T.com. Uh, the real, the main site is float.app, A P P, uh, or you can do joinfloat.com if you want to check out the site. Um, the, uh, the event is April 29 through May 3rd in Gauze, Texas, deep in the heart of Texas. And my event code is best Alex Martin. That's my handle on the site. B E S T A L E X M A R T I N. That's my name. Um, if you go on float, you can look me up at best Alex Martin. And uh, if you use my code at the checkout on the floatfest.com, you get 30 bucks off the VIP experience ticket. So that's Yay, a pretty good awesome. deal. All right. I will um, definitely link to that in the show notes. That's amazing. Yeah. And the float Fantastic. app, float.app. And float .app. yep. And the listeners can go there. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and Alex, thank you so thank much you for, for having me. Yeah. Thanks for joining. This was a great conversation. I really loved it. I appreciate you being on your show. And, and I appreciate that you're communicating these things to people in a yeah. way that's really accessible. That's, that's important. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, one more thing. You have a, a podcast you do. Let's, let's Oh, hey, yeah. That. Well, it's a float related podcast. I do a weekly show every Thursday uh, at five o'clock Eastern called The Drop. And uh, it's on the float website. Uh, it's a live stream. And it's basically talking about what's happening with the site. And uh, I have a live chat and member call it. So if you sign up for the site, and you want to join the show, you can join in and tell me what you're up to, what you're going to vent at the show, what kind of cool things you're doing. Show me your, uh, your, 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 you know, new chickens or, or your homesteading, you know, uh, projects. Uh, I made banana bread in a, in a solar oven this week. So I showed that on the show last week. <laughs> so oh, wow. it was fun. Awesome. So, so you know, which, it, things, like so many yeah. fun things, you know, it's just, it's just a way for, uh, to communicate what we're doing at the, at the site and to get people involved with each other. So I do that every Thursday. So check it out if you get a chance. Awesome. I'll uh, link in right. the show notes to everything we've talked cool. about today. You've been listening to the create what you speak podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear the podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Apple podcasts, and your favorite podcasting player. I'm Sloan Fremont, and I hope you'll join me for the next episode of the Create What You Speak podcast, where we will continue to free our minds, expand our consciousness, and untangle those thoughts that keep us stuck. You can find out more at my website, sloanfremont.com. Talk to you all next week.